Hi, what's up? Welcome back. Um, a little play with the bike again, a bit more retage. Um, next one's the screen. This is really one of those things, a little bit of retage, something that I've done on another bike in the past, works quite well. Um, when you see the, the whole rat bike thing, if there's 35 years available, your screen will look like it's been around the world and back. But like I said with this, right from the beginning, this is not a rat bike if you want to be a purist. This is more of a survival bike where you've done it all yourself, and that's really the point. So this today I'm just going to deal with the screen. Uh, this is one of those brilliant RWA screens, that, or MRA screens. What are they from? I don't know. Oh dear, Muppet. Uh, MRA screen, it's a German thing, they've got this aerofoil on. And they're brilliant, you know, the motorway, 80, 90 mile an hour, two up. You can adjust that and then the pillion doesn't get a blast in the back of the head. It's pretty cool and I want to keep it, but it looks a little bit too lame and tame. So I've got to get some age and some damage into it. That's what this little bit's about. It's a bit boring really, it's not that interesting. It's certainly not a how-to. But there's one thing I just want to show you what I mean with this. There's a little bit of a design faux pas with this. I'll show you. Welcome back to the Wizz Garage. So this is the problem, as you can see, uh, to get to headlight bulbs, dash bulbs, anything like that on this bike, you have to take this part of the fairing off to get to the back, because that's where you get to the bulbs. But you can't get up underneath, there's no access, and certainly to the back of the dash. So there's a lot of stuff underneath here you have to get to. And yeah, you have to take these plastic panels off, which it's not a problem, it's cut the bolts. But the one issue that's a real, some stupid ass has designed, is that's where the screen goes. There's the two bolts. You need to undo those with this big six mil Allen bolt, Allen key, to get those out. Then you can release the whole fairing. But they cover those up with the screen. So what I'm gonna to do today is drill holes in the screen so I can physically put the screen in place permanently and still get to those bolts. And I'm gonna sand that back as well, get some patina into it. Uh, you laughing at Don't do this to your brand new Iridium double bubble yubble screen. That's the one. 70 quid from M&P, no. right. Because I'm a lazy ass, this, <laughs> there's nine bolts to take this off and it doesn't have to come off today. So what I'm gonna do instead, is gonna pull these, these little, there's these little rubber doodars that hold it on at the moment. They're like a rubber grommet with a brass thread on the inside. One of you clever boys will tell me what they're called. Someone did last time because I'm an idiot, I've got no memory, can't remember. You just screw into them and it, pr it pulls the brass thread towards and it screws them in place. And that's great until the rubber perishes and the brass bit falls off the back and you can't get to it and you have to do what I've done and use number plate screws which are the next best thing. Number plate screws are a brilliant, brilliant fix for fairing screws because they are soft and they don't split the fairing. What I'm going to do instead is going to measure how far that way, just kind of locate them with measurements. They are approximately 20 mil inboard, so coming inwards and 20 mil down, so they're 20, they're a square. So come in 20 and down 20 and mark, and that's where I reckon I'll have to drill to make a hole so I can get to them. So let's get stuck in. Isn't right, so.
So there we are, access now to those bolts whenever I need it, which means I can permanently bolt the screen on, screen on or alternatively even blend it in. Just glue it on, blend it in, even if I'm gonna, whatever, I don't know. Anyway, right now, pushing. Um, I want it to look like it's been on the road for 30 years. And I haven't got 30 years, so I'm not gonna wait. No. It's gonna be contrived, we're gonna do it now. Scotch Bright, get all the shiny off that, make it kind of opaque, like it looks like it's done a million miles. And they're only cheap anyway, so let's get stuck in. Got Scotch Bright? Mm -hmm. got any? Right, let's get going. Two minutes. Right. The aim is to just bust the shine off this, not to make it totally opaque as wet and dry paper would, but to just bust this gloss off it and make it look like it's, you know, contrive it to look old and worn. Right, moved over to T-cut now, just using T-cut on a scotch bright, just to gently take out all the little lines, so hopefully it's just opaque, purely, no lines, no scratches, just opaque, so it looks really old, I'm trying to contrive that effect. Right, that's enough of that, let's see how that looks. Just trying to age it a bit, that's all it's about. Make it look bad old screen. Pen. Mm, that's better. It's better, isn't it? Took the yep. gloss off it. Right, let's get it on the bike, so it looks like. Right, here we are. It's not properly fitted, I loosen the bottom because these aren't working again. You have to get something down the back and hold those little brass things. It's a nightmare, that's why I bought these bolts. So now I can get access to those bolts, take the fairing off, that looks quite good, works. And when I take the fairing off tomorrow, I'll take all of that off and then bolt that on permanently so it never comes off again, and that'll be part of it. And that's just done what I wanted, taking a little bit of that glossy shine off. I'll do a little bit more later on. But you can't do it too aggressive. Go too aggressive with sharp paper, you send up the lines and it looks a bit crap. I just want it kind of opaque and a little bit circled and swirly where it's just done loads of work. Right, next one's gonna be Tank cover. Tank cover's coming off. I'm just going to literally put uh, coat paint over the tank, nothing special. Um, I'll show you something now. And the idea of just painting the tank quick is I'm going to do all sorts of fun things to the tank, but it needs to be black just for now so I can ride it around. Uh, and that'll be the next one. Just going to pull that off and get that painted. But I'm going to show you this little trick. A few of you have asked about this satin. Come have a look. All right, a lot of people have asked about the satin. Um, shouldn't it be matte black and so on? Well, it will be. I'm going to show you what happens. This is just a quick little thing I always do with it. You paint it satin black first, you get that nice satin sheen. And this is about a week's dirt, it's been horrible this week. And I just take a paintbrush and literally just sweep the dust off. Just the excess, like that. Fluff all that off. Leave, leave behind the stuff that's really stuck on. And the same on the frame, same on the rims, everywhere. Everywhere the dirt gets on it, just dust it off. Now that, it's quite permanent, it was, well it's not, but the point is it builds up and that builds up a patina and it starts to go grey. Rather than just being black and then matte black, you get kind of a grey finish. I'll show you on the front wheel, let's have a look. Same on there, look. Anywhere around it, just dust it off. So use a, just a paintbrush, nothing more aggressive than that. Just brush off the excess and leave the rest on there. And as it builds up over years, it looks really good. And that's the kind of effect, and that's the sort of thing. Finally, just gonna, for, this is a quick one tonight. Honestly, I haven't got a lot of time. Um, I'll do a bit more with that, and the tank is next, so the whole front's coming off. Quite a bit more work in the next one. Just wanna show you something. A friend of mine, uh, as I said to you in a previous video, is making us some chain mail. The chain mail is for putting around the exhaust and some other bits of the bike, and in that sense, it's going to look really cool. One of you said, oh, but you can dye chainmail. What's special about the stuff you're having made? It's being made by a mate of mine, which in itself is special. I want to show you something. This is the reason I mean. You can go on eBay, you can buy chainmail for £35 for a, 
uh, I think a whole kind of shirt in chainmail, but it's usually made in China and it's just mass produced and it's just a product, isn't it, Pam? Mm -hmm. Nothing special to it, is there? Nope. We've got a friend of ours who does blades, makes knives, that sort of thing, and he's very clever with that and he's offered, as a, as a, an act of friendship, a, a gift, he's offered, he said, I'll make you some chainmail, do you want me to make you some? It's going to be big 12 mil stuff, not the little 8 mil, which is what you would have for a suit, and in that sense, it's all handmade. He's hand making every single ring of this chainmail, and that's quite special. That's what makes it special. Yeah, I could go and buy loads of it. And the point I'm going to make is this, right? This is the kind of best analogy I can bring. That's a buck knife. I love knives. That is a buck knife. Have you seen one of those? Probably one of the best folding knives you can buy. Certainly the most, certainly the coolest brand of knife. And I know there are loads of others, but I love buck knives. I've got two or three of those. They're lovely. And they're a really lovely thing. Really love that. But this, this knife was made for me by the guy that's making the chain now. Now, that is pretty cool. He made it from a saw blade, an industrial saw blade, thick three mil one, and tempered it, sharpened it, it's razor sharp, and it literally is a hand folding knife, and I love that. Now the point here is that, when you look at the two, which one looks really shiny and really bling? Well, it's obviously that one, but which one's cool? It's the one that's made for you by your friend. It's the one that your, your buddy makes for you and says, yeah, mate, I made that for you. That's special. And that's why the chain mail is going to be special because my mate Tony's making it. It's going to be awesome and it's going to have some special meaning. And when it goes on the bike, it's going to be something special and it has depth to it. It has a little bit more to it than a product purchased from eBay. Get the point? Do you understand? Right, here we you go. You don't have to tell me. I'm going to leave it there before I cut myself a little bit away. Um, Thanks for watching, only a short one, wasn't really much, just sand that in, bore the holes. Some of this is monotonous and time consuming and boring, but that was just a little bit of that. Um, and a lot of this is going to be, we're going to leap forward a little bit more now. Uh, now it's all black, tank cover off, start working on the tank, I've got some cool ideas for that, you wait and see. Thanks for watching, right up.